What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Game Nights. This show is brought to you by Wizards of the Coast. Now, today we have a really, really exciting episode. We're playing with the brand new cards from Commander Legends. Ooh partners baby yep we have some awesome guests but before we get into it we got to talk about our sponsor cardkingdom.com slash command zone if you head on over to that affiliate link you're going to get everything that you need to start buying magic cards and getting well on your way to making a commander deck boosting up a current one that you have or building around one of the brand new commander legends they've got sealed product singles and so much more on the website make sure you check it out all you have to do is use that affiliate link and purchase your magic cards there and blammo you're on the way to making a cool new partner deck or building around one of the brand new legends of commander legends or boosting up your deck with some of the amazing singles that are available right now yeah you're gonna buy that stuff anyway just use our affiliate link cardkingdom.com slash command zone when you do you're simultaneously helping out this show and the content that you enjoy before we get into the episode really quick we want to mention something we have launched a kickstarter for something exciting it is game nights themed card sleeves Ooh. this is something new we've never done before and we got to say right away supplies are limited we had to pre-order our inventory so there's actually a limited number of the sleeves that we have available and there's no guarantee at this moment we have no idea when we're recording whether we've completely sold out or not so if you're interested in these sleeves and i gotta say the designs are amazing we're really proud of how they came out and they shuffle super well yep and they are very high quality they're made by ultra pro using their eclipse technology there's a link in the show notes if you just hit pause on this video go down there click the link place your order right away because supplies are definitely dwindling at this point and uh, if you want to get your hands on them this will be your only chance yep and they may already be gone as yeah. we speak so make sure you check that out and then of course come back and play the video and of course once you're done with game nights we'll always as always have tons of giveaways from us to you so you don't want to miss out on that and how to win yeah stick around to the end of the episode all right should we do it let's go partner up How's it, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Game Nights. On this episode, we have one of your favorite people from a recent episode returning. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Joe Johnson. I'm an actor. You may recognize me from Baskets, Orville, or Criminal Minds, but more importantly, I'm back on Game Nights, baby. And I'm trying to get that W. You know what I'm saying? And give a warm welcome to a brand new player who's never been on Game Nights. Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel Weeks. I'm a comedian and a podcaster. I have a podcast called The Commander Sphere. I also play on a live Dungeons and Dragons campaign called Better Than Heroes. And I'm so excited to be here for my first episode on Game Nights. Today, we are battling it out with the new cards from Commander Legends. There are over 70 new legendary creatures, and that includes 40 new partners. I mean, the possibilities with this set are out of this world. So my deck is built around the partner pairing of Rogue Rock and Akroma. So the thing about having a zero cost commander is you can play all the cards that care about having your commander on the battlefield. And then I filled the rest of the deck with creatures that have tons of keywords, so Akroma can buff them up and I can swing in for tons of damage. All right, so I built a deck around Kamal and Jessica. The goal of my deck is to put out a bunch of creatures, use Kamal's ability to pump them up, but I also have some really huge monsters. So I can use Jessica's ability to give them that extra punch so I can really knock out my opponents. So my deck is Kodama and Tago. <laughs> <laughs> So when I saw this card, I knew I had to build a deck all about rock tokens. The first step is to make a ton of them. The second step is to find interesting ways to use them. And the third step is to, unsurprisingly, throw them at my opponents. I mean, let's be real. If I can kill somebody by throwing a rock at them, then I will consider myself to have won this game no matter what else happens. Ouch. Oh, and Kodama is also pretty cool, but mostly he's just there because I wanted green. And I'll be playing Sakashima and Tevish Sak. So this is a clone deck. Whatever the best thing on the board is, I want to have a copy of it. Then I have a bunch of tricky ways to change my clones up anytime I want. And then I'll use a combination of my most powerful creatures and my opponents to gain a ton of value and win the game. 
Okay, let's battle. Let's do this, y'all. Giddy up, partner. Let's play. Let's rock. You, come on, you knew I was gonna say that. I have no choice, I have to say that. Welcome everyone to the table. As is Game Night's tradition, we have brand new playmats from Ultra Pro, featuring Commander Legends. <laughs> nice. Ooh. And Rachel, it is your first time on the show, so we all know what that means. Joe, would you like to do the honors? Definitely, Rachel Weeks, I dub the Sir Rachel. Woo. Thank you. All right. <laughs> hey. Thanks for having me, I'm so excited. Welcome to Game Night's. <laughs> Only, Only one, one stand. All right, you guys ready? Yes, Let's do it. Rock. I will draw, and first turn, I'm gonna play an Ancient Tomb. Yikes. And then I will play a Gruel Signet. Wow. And I'll take two damage and go to 38. <laughs> now I know it's a landfall deck, but don't sleep on Gruel Signet. I mean, I'll have four mana on my turn too if I drop another land. So this is a great start, and I will pass the turn. Okay. I will draw for turn. I will play a Swamp and pass turn to you, Rachel. Okay. I will draw for turn, and before we do anything else, let's get my commander in here. <laughs> uh... Wow. My favorite thing about Rogue Rock is you can play him without any lands. I know this card may not look like much, but he's gonna pack a punch later on with the deck I've built. And then I'll play Arid Mesa as my land return, and I will pass to you, Josh. All right, wow. I will draw. <laughs> that was pretty cool, actually. <laughs> that was pretty cool. All right, I will play a mountain, and then I will pass the turn. All right, untap, draw. I'll play a command tower for my turn, and then I'm gonna play a Wood Elves. I'll search my library and find a Stomping Ground, and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Sure. Oh, that's not good. Next turn, I'm gonna have six mana. I am doing exactly what the deck wants to do. It is ramping up how it should. These early turns are the perfect time to do nothing but ramp, and Joe's deck is doing that magnificently. He's gonna have six mana on turn three, and that's far ahead of everyone else. And I tap Ancient Tomb to do that, so I'll take two damage. And I'll go to 36. And I will pass the turn. Okay, I will draw for turn. I will play an island, and I will tap two, and cast Arcane Signet. Cool, cool, cool. This is kind of becoming the classic commander start. Turn two, play a ramp spell and set you up for the later turns. I'm doing my best to keep up with Joe here. Obviously a little bit worse in comparison, but still pretty good for a turn two play. Now pass turn to you. On your end step, I'm gonna crack my Arid Mesa. I will find a Sacred Foundry and put it into play tapped. I will go to 39. Okay, I will untap and draw for turn. I will play a Plains as my land for turn and use those to cast a Legion's Initiative. Oh, nice. That busts my commander to a 1-1. One, one. I like this card because early in the game, it makes my stuff a little bit bigger. But later in the game, it protects my big board if there were to be a board wipe. Okay, Joe, that start warrants it. <laughs> I am sending my 1-1 one, one First Strike Menace Trample Commander your way. I have no blocks because I don't have two creatures, so I gotta take it. Ouch, go to 35. And that is commander damage. First blood. Technically, you first blood yourself. I did, I did first yeah. blood myself. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> All right, I will draw. Okay, I'm gonna play an Arid Mesa. Nice. I'm gonna crack the Arid Mesa, go to 39. And I will find a Taiga, which will enter the battlefield untapped. And I'm gonna tap two, and I'm going to play a Rampant Growth. Sure. And I will find a Forest, and put it into the battlefield tapped. This is just a super standard start for our Landfall deck, or just any deck with green in it. But Joe got off to this amazing start, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to keep up. And then I'll pass the turn. Right, untap, upkeep, draw. We'll play a mountain for my land for turn. I will tap the Ancient Tomb and a Gruel Signet, and I will go to 33. I will play a Root Weaver Druid. Cool. This is a new card from Commander Legends, and the reason why I love this is because it's a tempt. Who could turn down free lands? I mean, come on. This is gonna accelerate this game in my favor. Typically with cards like this, you just say no to the offer because the person playing it is gonna get more than the rest of you. But looking around, I mean, my deck's not great at ramping and neither is Rachel's, so this is a very tempting offer. The first thing that I think I wanna do is talk to the other players and make sure that we're on the same page. Because what you don't wanna have happen is some players take the lands and some don't. I think either we all want to do it or none of us want to do it. I feel like we need to consult here. Mm -hmm. We'd all get two and he'd get one. So that's like six lands against three. So that's we not get, that bad. Oh, 
Okay, so he'll get three. We all get we two. We all get two okay. into play. No, 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 no. You, you don't talk about it with each other. Just just make your decision on your own. You, y'all you grown. Also, there's no landfall triggers on board right now, so it's not the worst time to do it. And, yeah. And we can all agree, I think, we can use our extra mana to keep him in check if he starts going crazy. Yeah. So we're all going to take all three? It's a maze. I'm so feeling we... tempted. Yeah. <laughs> so at the end, they kind of take all the lands, but they agree to use them against me. Hurts my feelings. Okay, I am tempted. I will go find three basics. I found three islands. Joe, you're gonna get one of them, and I'll get two. I found two planes and a mountain. Joe, you're gonna get a planes. And I found two forests and a mountain. And Joe, you can have one of the forests, and I'll get the other two. This game just got supercharged. Supercharged. That's a cool little card. Yeah, Yeah. I like it. In the grand scheme of things, Joe having one more mana than the rest of us probably isn't the best. But I do get to kind of make friends with Jimmy and Rachel here. And I think my deck's a little on the slow side. So already just being friendly with two of the other players, it helps keep the spotlight off of me so that hopefully I can last until the later game. And then I will tap three and I'll play a Commander Sphere. Very good. And I can't do anything else, so I will pass the turn. So I'm going to have 10 mana on my next turn. (laughs) I feel like my opponents have already made an alliance against me, but I think I'm still pretty far ahead of everybody else by at least a couple of turns. All right, I will untap and I will draw for turn. All right, I will tap three and pay Phyrexian mana to cast Phyrexian Metamorph. And I'll go to 38. And that will copy my Arcane Signet. And then I will tap the remainder of my mana to play a Solemn Simulacrum. So sad. Mm -hmm. Now go search my library for a basic land card. I will find a Swamp and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Even though Joe is off to an amazing start, I'm feeling pretty good about my position. I've got a lot of mana on the board, so I'm ready to start making some moves. Pass turn. All right, I will untap, draw for turn, and I will also play a new card. I will cast Keeper of the Accord. Nice. That's sweet. So this card is new from Commander Legends and it's one of the ones that I am the most excited about. Ignore that text about making the 1-1 soldier token. I mean, that's fine, but it's not why I'm excited. The fact that it can put extra lands into play, this is just an ability that white needs so, so bad at Commander and I'm really happy to see it. This card is one of my favorite new cards from Commander Legends. It triggers on each opponent's end step. This could get me three lands into play by my next turn. This card is sweet. And Jimmy, you've ramped. I yeah. will attack you for one rogue rock damage. Yes. I cannot block, so I'll go to 37. And one of that is commander damage. Mm-hmm. And then I will pass the turn to you, Josh. Okay. I will untap. Draw. All right, I'm going to begin by casting my commander, Togo, Goblin Weaponsmith. <laughs> Nice. So here he is, my commander, let's be honest, he rocks. This whole deck is built around the fact that he makes these rock equipment. And I know it doesn't look like much, but trust me, if I can get some of the synergies going, I think these rocks are gonna do some work. Hopefully I can live that long. I'm going to play my land for turn, and that will trigger Tago, and I will make a rock. Nice. And then I'm gonna do two things at once just to save time. So I'm gonna tap two and I'm gonna play three visits. Okay. And at the same time I'm searching for that, I'm gonna crack my Fable Passage. So Fable Passage will find a forest and three visits will find a Cinder Glade. Sweet. And because I have more than four lands, both of those are gonna be untapped when they come in. They will also trigger my commander twice and I'll make two more rocks. Yikes. (laughs) All right, and then I'm gonna pay two, and I'm gonna equip Togo with two rocks. One in each hand. One in each hand. (laughs) Dual wields rocks. Yeah. Okay, one thing to note here is that it's not super useful to have a creature that has two rocks equipped because they can't use both. They have to tap when they use them, but I don't care. Togo just looks cool holding two rocks. And that's all I can do, so Joe, it is your turn. At the beginning of your end step, Keeper of the Accord is going to trigger. And because you control more lands than I do, I can search my deck for a basic planes and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Nice. Okay, Joe, yep, it's your go. All right, I'll untap, draw for turn. Let's see. Let's tap four, five, six. I'll take two damage from Agent Two. I will play a Mana Reflection. Uh 
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This card is going to send me way over the top. I mean, I've been on a good ramp pace, but now I get to double my mana. Double the mana. Double the fun. Mana reflection. Woo! <laughs> Well, those three extra lands we gave Joe, they're looking pretty bad now. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to give the ramp deck more ramp. I shouldn't have let Jimmy and Josh talk me into that. Oh, why? Why did we give him those extra lands? We should have known better. He's gonna have so much mana now. Ugh, why did I let Josh talk me into that? That was, that was a bad call on my part. Now he just gets to double those land. Yeah, that was bad. And then I'll play Nissa Vastwood Seer. Cool. And I'll search my library for a forest. That goes into my hand, but I'm gonna play it for my land for turn. And because I have seven or more lands, that is going to cause Nissa to flip. Uh oh. And she becomes Nissa, Sage Animist. Oh, come on. So Nissa is a card draw engine. And that's pretty bad because one of the things you can hope for when somebody ramps as hard as Joe is that they don't have any gas in hand. But now this is gonna help him draw more cards. So it's definitely gonna be able to continuously use all that mana he's got. This is getting bad. I'm gonna immediately plus her. And I'm gonna reveal the top card of my library. It's Rada, Heart of Keld. Oh! Which is not a land, so that will go into my hand. And then I'm gonna play Defense of the Heart. Mm. Yikes. Mm. Okay, all my deck wants to do is put creatures onto the board. And now, if I have three, Joe gets to search his deck and put two threats into play. I don't know how I'm supposed to avoid having three creatures on the board. This is gonna make it really hard. Oh, this is one of the last things you want to see in a deck that has a ton of the scariest creatures known to magic. If Defense of the Heart triggers, we might just lose on the spot. All right, and then I'll cast Rada Heart of Kel. Ooh, that's a big yikes. Okay, so this is pretty scary because don't forget, Rada can be activated multiple times in a turn. And one of Joe's commanders gives trample, and the other one triples damage on something. That could mean somebody's dead from Rada like next turn. I mean, luckily I don't think I look very scary. I have a goblin that's holding two rocks and that's it. So hopefully Joe goes after one of the others. And then I can look at the top card of my library anytime, so I will. Is it awesome? It is awesome. Oh gosh. <laughs> Terrifying. I was hoping you'd say it sucks. So Rada lets me look at the top card of my library anytime. So just assume I'm always doing that, even if you don't see it. I have one mana floating and I have nothing to do with it, so I'm gonna pass turn. Before you pass the turn to Jimmy, I have two triggers on Keeper of the Accord. You control more creatures than I do, so I make a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. And because you have more lands than I do, I will put a basic planes onto the battlefield tapped. Keeper of the Accord doing work. Doing work. Ramp. Well, it looks like my hands are tied because my Keeper of the Accord just keeps giving me soldiers. I could accidentally trigger this Defense of the Heart. I will untap and then I will draw for turn. Okay, I will tap three mana and I'm gonna cast Mirage Mirror. That is bad. My deck is all about clone effects, and I love Mirage Mirror because it can also copy enchantments. And there's a really good looking enchantment that I've got my eyes on. Then I'm going to tap another two mana, and I'm gonna make my Mirage Mirror turn into Mana Reflection. <laughs> okay, okay. Looks like two of my opponents have doubled mana. That land steal is looking worse and worse all the time. A blue deck? With double mana, this is a problem. You need to stay in your land, Jimmy. I want everybody else having double mana, just me. So now I have eight mana available. <laughs> I'm gonna tap all eight mana and I will cast Thassa Deep Dwelling. Oh uh, yeah. So I've got some really strong enter the battlefield effects in my deck because of all the clones. And this is a card that is able to blink and reuse them over and over again. And I'll also cast Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. Uh-oh. So Jimmy's commander is here, pretty cool, and particularly synergizes well with Thassa, because Jimmy can just change whatever Sakashima's copying on his end step any turn if something better gets put on the battlefield. So yeah, this is pretty good synergy in Jimmy's deck. No surprise. And Sakashima's gonna enter the battlefield copying Solemn Simulacrum. So I will go look for a basic land. I'll find a basic island and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Not bad. And then when I go to my end step, Thassa is going to trigger. So what I will do is flicker my Solemn Simulacrum and have come back to the battlefield. 
and do the same thing and look through my library for a basic land card, I will find a swamp and put that onto the battlefield tapped. And then I will pass the turn. Wow. All right, so Jimmy is really putting that value engine together and I am starting to get worried over here. His next turn after he untaps is probably gonna be real spicy. Luckily, my next turn will come first, so maybe I can do something about it. On your end step, I have a Keeper of the Accord trigger. Because you control more lands than I do, I will search my deck for a basic planes and put it into the battlefield tapped. Nice. I will untap and draw for turn. My priority this turn is not triggering Joe's Defense of the Heart. So I have to figure out a way to get rid of some of my creatures, I guess. Well, I think what I have to do is go to combat. Okay. And in order to not trigger Joe's Defense of the Heart, I will make a valiant sacrifice and I will send Josh at Josh. <laughs> <laughs> and I will send Rograk at Jimmy okay. and to their dooms. Okay, well, I will block myself with Tago. And I will block Rograk with my Solemn and my Sakashima, which is a copy of Solemn. The soldier token of me dies. Rograk will go back to the command zone. Rachel's jumping through a lot of hoops to make sure my defense of the heart doesn't go off. Which is smart, because you definitely don't want that thing going off, but also annoying. <laughs> then I will cast a Chroma Vision of Ixidor. Ooh. So Rachel's second commander is here. It is a big flying angel and it can make her creatures huge. This would normally be really, really scary. However, Joe and Jimmy both are just obviously bigger threats than me. So I'm fine with it. Let's just have all of them go at each other and I'm just gonna build up a little castle of rocks over here and eventually hopefully do something with it. Hopefully. That's all I got. Your go, Josh. All right, I will untap, I will draw. I'm gonna play one of the new choice lands. I'm gonna play Timber Crown Pathway. That's going to trigger Tago. I'll make a rock. Yikes. <laughs> and then I'm gonna play Aspiring Statuary. Oh no. Oh, so now you can tap your rocks for mana. Aha, those rocks, they look a lot better when they're tapping for mana, which is basically what this card allows me to do. And just like that, I feel like I'm virtually caught up with Jimmy and Joe and how much mana they have access to every single turn. I mean, I would be caught up if it wasn't for that mana reflection. So uh, let's see what I can do about that. All right, and then I'm going to cast Calming Verse. Oh gosh, destroy all enchantments. Correct. <laughs> oh no. Ooh, this is huge for all of us because this is gonna completely take out Joe's plans here. I'm a little sad because I don't get to copy a mana reflection anymore, but honestly, I would take that over the alternative any day. It, it happens? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I can't do anything. Nice. Jeez. So mana reflection, defense of the heart, and legion's initiative down. I feel very calm now. Wow. Okay, that took the wind out of my sails a little bit. So Rada will not be doing as much damage as I thought she would be doing. Whew, that hurt. Yes. I may lose my Legion's initiative in this trade, but if it gets mana reflection and defense of the heart off the board, I'm okay with that. All right, then I'm gonna tap two green and two rocks. Again, because of the improvise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna play Court of Bounty, which makes me the monarch. <gasps> hey, congrats. The yeah. king of rocks. Yeah, not of rock. Not of rock. No, no. That's like any Sorry, number king. of other people. <laughs> king of rocks, though. Rocks is open. <laughs> All right, and before we continue, very important. Nice. nice. Mm. So this is a new card from Commander Legends. It puts the monarch mechanic into the game, which is one of my favorite mechanics in multiplayer magic. King in the castle. King in the castle. I am the king in the castle. The monarch has entered the game. However, looking around the board, I don't really think that my deck does too well against gruel creatures and angels, so I'm never gonna be able to hold on to this thing. Still, I can't wait to see the other players hitting each other and passing that crown around. Okay, then I'll pass the turn. At your end step, how many lands do you have, Josh? I have eight. Okay, so that is fewer than I have, so Keeper of the Cord doesn't trigger. Wait, I have less lands than you? Yeah. Boros wins! What the heck? I'm a landfall deck, Give her too. the crown, Josh! Speaking of which, Monarch will trigger on my end step as well. I'll draw a card. Nice, nice. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right, let's untap here, and I'll draw my card for the turn. So, because of Rada, I can look at the top card of my library. Oh, that's spicy. Okay. Ugh. Uh. <laughs> 
So let's uptick Nissa. Okay, I'll go ahead and reveal the top card. Whoa, so spicy. Kamal's wheel. Oh no. Wow. This card is particularly terrifying because of Joe's commander. When you combine those two together, it turns all of his lands into 4-4 trample, vigilance, indestructible haste creatures. I don't know the exact math, but if he can resolve this spell and have his commander out, we might all just die or be at such a low life total that there's nothing we can do to stop him. And then I'll play Kamal, Heart of Krosa. Ooh. Scary start. Okay. My commander is a beast. On my combat, all of my creatures get plus three, plus three and trample. If I can play that Kamal's wheel next turn, I think I can win this game. The buff is scary on Kamal, but honestly, the trample scares me more, especially with Rada on the board, because she can punch through for a lot of damage. And it looks like my chump blockers are just too small. All right, and I'll tap three, tanking two from Ancient Tomb. <laughs> to cast Jessica Thrice Reborn. This is probably gonna hurt. Uh-oh. She comes in with two loyalty counters since it's the second time I've cast a commander. Wow. So Jessica's here. That ability to make something deal triple damage against players, it's pretty scary. I definitely don't want Rada to hit me this turn. Unfortunately, I've kind of made myself the target for some reason. So I will use her zero ability to target Rada, Heart of Keld, to give her triple damage. Well, that's bad. Uh-oh. Go to combat. Okay. So all your creatures are getting plus three, plus three, and trample? Yes, until end of turn. So you got a four, four, a five, four, and a six, six, all with trample. It's bad, but he has a number of creatures. Maybe he can attack me with one of the smaller ones. So, Josh, I'm sending Wood Elves at you. Jamie, I'm sending the Root Weaver at you. And Rachel, I'm sending Rada at you. I declare no blocks. So the Root Weaver will hit me and I'll take five and go to 32. And then I will not block. Okay. And I will take four and go to 35. All right. So only the damage to me is tripled, right? That's correct. Of course. Joe attacks me with the biggest creature he's got that deals triple damage. I have to put something in front of that, otherwise I'm taking 18 here. I will put my Keeper of the Cord in front of Rada. My Keeper of the Accord will die to first strike damage. Then I will take six damage because it is tripled. Going to 33. And I've become the Monarch. Yep. Cool. I get the crown, I get the crown, I get the crown, doesn't really fit. But I get the crown. So I will go to my end step and I will draw a card for my arc. I will untap and draw for turn. So I will start things off by tapping five mana and I'll cast Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools. This is scary looking. This is my second commander and it is just packed with value. So with something like this on the battlefield, I could get so many cards in my hand that they won't be able to stop me. So Jimmy's second commander is on the table. That ultimate is pretty splashy. Steal all the commanders from everywhere, but you know, I'm not worried about it. There's a lot of things that have to happen before he's got 10 loyalty. So I'm gonna plus one him, and I'll sacrifice Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, which is currently a Solemn Simulacrum. And since that's my commander, I'll draw an extra card, and because it's a Solemn, I'll draw another card, so I'll draw four cards. Value. Sweet. Wow. Ooh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Okay, I will tap for one, two, three, four, and I'll play Yogmoth Thran Physician. Cool. Nice. Okay, so I'm a little worried here because the minus one counters can pick off a lot of my board. It'll draw him cards and he can proliferate his Tevish Zot. We could be in a lot of trouble here if Jimmy puts something together. And then I'm gonna tap two mana and I will cast a Talisman of Dominance. Okay. All right, Joe is threatening to take us all out on his next turn. I can't do anything about the Kamal's will in his hand, but I can at least slow him down a bit. I will tap another two mana and turn my Mirage Mirror into a Kamal Heart of Krosa. Nice. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of combat on my turn, all my creatures get plus three, plus three, and trample. That's pretty good. I will go to combat. And Joe, I will swing at Jessica with my Kamal, which is now an 8-8. And my Solemn Simulacrum at your Nissa, which is now a 5-5. No blocks. All right. So Nissa will die, and Jessica will go back to the command zone. 
Sweet. Killing my planeswalkers. That's a pretty harsh blow. But as long as I have my commander and Kamal's will, I think I still got this one in the bag. And then on my end step, Thassa will trigger and I will flicker the Solemn Simulacrum and have come back to the battlefield. Finding a basic swamp, putting it on the battlefield tapped. Nice. And then I'll pass the turn to you, Rachel. Okay, I will untap and I will draw my card for turn. All right. And then I'll cast Bastion Protector. Get behind me! That's sweet. So, Akroma is now an 8-8. Eight, eight. Yikes. I have a seven mana white commander, so I do not want her to die because she's gonna be very difficult for me to recast. So I love this card in the deck because it buffs her a little bit and adds keywords, which Akroma cares about. All right, I will spend four mana and I will cast Angelic Field Marshal. Oh, another one. So she gets plus two plus two because I control a commander and creatures I control have vigilance. So she's now a five five? Yep. Okay, Rachel's got a lot of power in the air right now and a chroma can make all that stuff bigger? Getting a little worried. Then before combat, I'll activate Slayer Stronghold and I will give Angelic Field Marshal plus two plus O oh, haste and vigilance. It is a seven five. I will go to combat and a chroma will trigger, which buffs my creatures for each keyword that they have. My Angelic Field Marshal is now a 10-8. Jeez! And Joe, you sent a little damage my way last turn. I'm going to send a Chroma and Angelic Field Marshal at you. They're all flying. Yes, sir. Yeah, no blocks. I'll take 18 and go to 11. Yikes. Wow. Uh-oh, she's still gonna have those flyers next turn. I don't have a lot of flyers. I'm in trouble. 11 life is not very much, and I have two big flyers. I could knock Joe out at any moment. But the best part about this is, I'm the monarch now. So I will pass the turn, but on my end step, I will draw because I'm wearing the crown. Mm. Nice. Okay, well, we know that next turn, if he plays that Kamal's will, then all the lands are turning into four fours. Not to mention it pumps all the creatures that he's already got, and uh, that's a lot of damage. So it's all up to me. Here we go. All right, I will untap and then my Court of Bounty is gonna trigger. Unfortunately, I have no land in hand, so I can't put one out. Ah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> then I'm gonna draw for turn. That's sweet. Oh, oh. Okay, I'm gonna begin by tapping a green and then three rocks because of the inspiring statuary and the improvised mechanic will give me three mana. Oh, nice. And then I'm gonna play Splendid Reclamation. Oh, okay, oh. get some lands back. Yeah, I only have two. They are Arid Mesa and Fabled Passage. Okay. So when I build the deck, I'm envisioning this card being played and I have six, seven, 10 lands in my graveyard and they all come into play, but I only get two and they come and tap. So yeah, it's a little disappointing. And that will trigger Togo and I'll make two rocks. Hey! Rocks! Nice. <laughs> so that happened. So my main worry at this moment is Joe and that Kamal's will that we know he has in his hand. I gotta do what I can to take that plan off the table. I don't know if this is gonna be good or bad, but I'm going to tap three and play Wheel of Fortune. No! <laughs> no, that's it's great. A, gets the land exactly. card out of his hand. I mean, I knew I got that card out of his hand, yeah. which is what I was thinking. Yeah, of, but yeah, I'm gonna yeah. give him, he's only got three cards. I'm gonna give him seven. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, Wheel of Fortune. I have to discard my hand, which means I gotta get rid of my Kamal's wheel. I like the card advantage, but that was my win con. Oh, I don't love seeing this because I did have more cards than the rest of the players, and now we're all equal. But it kind of saves us all from dying. I guess I'll take it. All right, so everybody draws seven new cards. Nice. Everyone reloaded. Cool. There's some downsides to playing this card here, right? It refills my opponent's hands, gives Rachel and Joe both more gas. I don't think it helps Jimmy much because he already had a lot of cards, but hopefully it saves us from dying next turn. Also, the thing about drawing seven new cards is you draw really cool stuff and then you get to play it. And then I'm going to tap two using my rock and make a Dockside Extortionist. <laughs> Pay up. Mm. So how many yeah, how many artifacts does everybody have? Two over here. Five over here. Zero for me. Okay, so that's seven treasure I'm gonna make. Uh-oh. Wow. Normally you have to sacrifice treasures to make mana, but in this case, 
Josh can just tap them for mana with Inspiring Statuary. So it's almost like he put seven mana rocks onto the table. I definitely didn't see that coming. Then I'm gonna tap three of the treasure for Improvise. And then I'll tap two red and I'll play Nesting Dragon. Ooh. Oh no. So now every time I play a land, I get a rock and a dragon egg. The good thing here is I can actually throw my own rocks at my own dragon eggs to create 2-2 flyers, which I think is gonna prove to be important because of Rachel's flyers. She just proved she can do a ton of damage out of nowhere, so I'm definitely gonna want some blockers. So I'm a little more worried about the nesting dragon because I thought I was the only one in the flyers game, and if he gets enough of those eggs cracked, I may not be able to get my big angels through. Then I'm gonna tap two more of the treasure and the three forests, and I will play a Shia. Ah, come on. So there are a lot of creatures in my deck, and a is in there because she makes all of those creatures trigger landfall. So now every time I drop a land or play a creature, I get a rock, I get a dragon egg. You can see where this is going. The value is starting to come together. I'm feeling pretty happy about it. Now Ashaya is a land, so she will trigger Nesting Dragon and Tago. Oh. So I'll get a rock and a dragon, egg. a dragon egg. And then I will play a forest, so that will make another rock and another dragon egg. You know, out of all of that, all I'm gonna do now is pass the turn. <laughs> But look, you have so many more I rocks. did stuff. You built, I have a board. You built yeah. a little yeah. wall. So I'm passing the turn here and I feel really, really good. I was able to stop Joe's plan and really explode on my battlefield. I got a ton of permanence in play. I am poised to take over this game on my next turn. So the thing is, that Wheel of Fortune actually drew me into a new plan, which might even be better than the old one. Would you be surprised if I said I might be able to win the game on this turn? Well, hello there. I'm the Beast Whisperer. You probably know me from my work in all the green precon decks. A lot of people have asked me the question recently, Beast Whisperer, why is it that you draw me a card when I cast a human creature spell? Shouldn't you only work with beasts? Well, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. There's a beast within every single one of you. You just have to let it out. And the best way to do that is with G Fuel. There's a flavor for every beast. Bahama Mama, Sour Blue Chug Rug, and my inner beast's personal favorite, Raging Gummy Fish. Basically, G Fuel gives your beast what it needs to hit the battlefield and win, win the game. game. And it's not like other energy drinks. It's got zero sugar, zero calories, just pure beast fuel. Go to gfuel.com and use the promo code Command Zone at checkout, and you can get 30% off your order. That's 30 whole percent. gfuel.com, promo code Command Zone, all one word. Use it. It's beastly. Ah, <clears throat> whoops. Forgot to whisper there for a moment. If you could do me a favor and just not mention that to anyone, being a beast yeller just doesn't have the same ring to it. Hey Jimmy, mind if I use your computer real quick? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Hmm, what's this new browser history here? Browser history? Wait, lady! Ew, this is disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, you weren't supposed to see that. You don't want anyone looking through your search history, not your friends, coworkers, and definitely not hackers, ad companies, or your cell and internet providers. That's why we recommend ExpressVPN. They have a technology called Trusted Server that makes it impossible for their servers to log any of your info. Many other VPNs slow your connection down and make your device sluggish, but ExpressVPN keeps your internet speeds blazing fast. Seriously? Blood Moon? Stasis? Winter Orb? Torpor Orb? Are you building a stack stack? I'm so ashamed. <laughs> Protect yourself with the VPN that we use and trust. Use our link, expressvpn.com slash nights today and get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash nights, nights with a K. Visit expressvpn.com slash nights to learn more. Hey, Johnny Combo Player here. My silver border should tell you that I'm not a regular magic card, but I am a regular player with regular problems. Now, I pride myself on being prepared for anything a game of magic has to throw at me. All High Tide, Hulk, Storm, or Kiki Jiki with the best of them. But one thing I wasn't prepared for was experiencing the first signs of hair loss. Aww. Let's face it, no guy is ever ready for thinning hair. Thankfully, now there's Keeps the simple and easy way to keep your hair. 
You see, you used to have to go to the doctor's office for your hair loss prescription. But now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit the doctor online and get medication delivered right to your home. So you can say goodbye to pharmacy checkout lines and awkward doctor visits. Just like interaction is the key to stopping my combo decks, prevention is key when it comes to hair loss. Keeps treatments typically take between four to six months to see results, so it's important to act at instant speed. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you're gonna save. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash nights. That's nights with a K to receive your first month of treatment for free. Remember, when hair loss comes your way, don't just scoop to it. Have a response ready. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash nights. Awesome. So tap. I will draw a card. So that Wheel of Fortune actually drew me into a new plan, which might even be better than the old one. Would you be surprised if I said I might be able to win the game on this turn? Okay, so I am going to tap six and play Marog, Fury of Akun. Uh, okay. This is really bad. Extra combat steps work really well with Kamal because he's gonna trigger every single time Joe gets to attack again. In the first combat, that's gonna be plus three, plus three. By the second combat, that's plus six, plus six. By the third combat, that's plus nine, plus nine. Forget about the fourth combat, we're already dead. The best we can hope for is that he doesn't have a lot of lands to play this turn. All right. Uh, so landfall, extra combat steps. Oh my. All right, I'll play a Spire Garden, which triggers Mirage. That's bad. So you have another- Two combat. Two combats. So now Joe's gonna get two combat steps this turn. Um, looking at his creatures, he has quite a few, and if they're all plus six, plus six and trample, oh boy, somebody's probably dead. And then I'm gonna tap two to explore. Oh, oh crap. Oh no. I'll draw a card, and then I get to play an additional land, and I'll play Taiga, which triggers Mirage. So I have two additional combat phases. Oh my. Yikes. Now we know Joe's gonna have three combats, and I just hit him for 18 damage. I don't know who's gonna die here, but it might be all of us. Okay. That is not good. Let's go to combat. So now I have three combat steps and I can activate Rada to make her huge. I'm pretty sure this is enough to win the game right here. Oh, uh, we're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. We're just, we're all gonna die. This is no longer, oh, somebody's dead. This is, we're all dead. I can't let this happen. Okay, before combat. Oh, oh. I am going to sacrifice a treasure. Tap two rocks for improvise, and I'm gonna chaos warp. <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh no. Targeting Kamal. All right, Kamal will die. Wow. All right, I'll send him back to my command zone. Not bad. This is a huge swing here because I don't think Joe has any good attacks anymore. Joe still gets all of his combats, but he doesn't get the plus pump effect from his commander. We're gonna live! We're gonna live! Oh, thank God. That, that sucked. Well, maybe I'll get something cool off the cast warp. But I still get to shuffle and reveal the top card, right? Right. Okay. Can't wait. All right, Josh, pick your poison. Oh okay. boy. <laughs> so if the top card is a really bad permanent, this could go even worse. Okay. Uh-oh. Let's see what it is. Uh, Horn of Greed! Yay, for the table! <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Horn of Greed is amazing for me right now because I'm a landfall deck too. Talk about the world's best chaos warp. Saves us all from dying and now it's flipped over a card draw engine for me? Oh, I'm really happy about this. So this went from I'm winning the game to I'm probably just dead to angels because I'm at 11 life. So now I have figured out a way to block those flyers. Okay, because of Rada, I can look at the top card of my library. <gasps> oh. Are we out? I'm Whoa. fine. He's fine. Oh, he found a fire. I am gonna sack the commander sphere and I will draw. Okay. So I'm just gonna pay six and play an ancient green warden. That's pretty good. Wow. So I'm sure Joe put this card in his deck because it doubles all of his landfall triggers. But in this case, he's playing it because it has reach which means it will be able to block Rachel's flyers. Is it possible that this card actually makes it so Joe survives and gets another untapped step? I guess we'll find out. I've got on to nine because of Ancient Tomb. I will live to fight another day. <laughs> Maybe. 
you're still just one removal spell away, but yeah, that's a good play. We well, have three combat phases now. Not bad. So now, without the buff from Kamal, Joe's attacks aren't looking very good, and I have an indestructible blocker. I'm actually doing okay. So now I'll go to my first combat. Yep. Here we go. And the only logical play is swing at Jimmy <laughs> with my Rada. 4-3 first strike? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll block with my Solemn Simulacrum, and then before damage is dealt, I'm going to sack the Solemn with Yawgmoth. Pay one life. <laughs> targeting your Bastion Protector. So it's gonna get a minus one, minus one counter. And then I'm going to draw two cards from Yawgmoth as well as Solemn Dying. Nice. Then I will go to my second combat. Mm -hmm. I will swing at you, Jimmy, for five first strike. Oh, Morag pumps it for each time it's attacked this turn. That's cool. Okay, I won't block this. I'll go to 26. And I'll get a third combat. And Jimmy, I'll swing at you again. <laughs> for six. Poor Jimmy. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> Getting uh, wailed upon. I'll take six damage and go from 26 to 20. And I believe that is all she wrote. Pass the turn. All right, so I take a little bit of damage here, but it is much better than being dead. This turn could have gone so much worse, so I'm glad to just be alive at the end of the day. Okay, let's go ahead and untap. I will draw a card for turn. Okay, what should I do here? That Mirage was really scary, but now that it's my turn, I think that actually might provide me with an avenue to victory. I'm gonna start things off. I'm going to tap one mana and play a Wayfarer's Bobble. Okay. All right. And then I will tap two blue mana and turn Mirage Mirror into Mirage Fury of Akum. Yikes. Yep. Sure. Okay, this is a little bit weird because Morog doesn't appear to be very good with what Jimmy has on the board right now. He doesn't have the same setup as Joe. He doesn't have Kamal and he doesn't have a lot of creatures and he's in blue black, so it's unlikely he's gonna be able to give everything haste. I'm just not sure what Jimmy's doing here. Um, and then I'll play a Cabal Coffers from my hand. That's gonna trigger Horn of Greed and my Mirage. So I'll get an extra combat step and I'll draw a card. Scary. Yep. I don't know what Jimmy plans to do with this Mirage, but he seems really excited about it, which makes me terrified. Okay, I'm gonna tap Cabal Coffers for four black mana, and then I'm gonna tap, I'm just gonna float all the mana now. So I'll tap the rest of my swamp, so that's gonna be 10 total black mana. I'm going to use Yawgmoth five times and discard five cards to proliferate five times onto Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools. Oh no. That's bad. Uh. So all of these proliferate triggers are gonna bring Tevish Zot to 10 loyalty, which is the magic number. Tevish Zot steals all the commanders from the battlefield and the command zone. So it looks like what was gonna happen on Joe's turn is just gonna happen on Jimmy's turn. We all might be dead. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna steal all the commanders and they're gonna be all mine under my control. <laughs> oh, we're dead. Yep. Yep, we're dead. I'm like frantically looking around my battlefield being like, okay, do I have any little tricks I can play? And then, oh yeah, of course I do. So Tevish Zai is gonna go to 10 loyalty. Yep. Uh, in response, I'm gonna throw a rock, throw at, a rock at Tevish Zai. No, Josh, my plans! <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I was gonna steal everything! <laughs> the the rock! The rock! No! <laughs> no! A rock! It all came apart because of one rock. I just like how Tevisad is like, phenomenal cosmic power! I am unstoppable! And then Tago just comes along and he's like, rock! <laughs> Ow, that really hurt. I guess I won't take over the world now. Like, honestly, after the meteor that killed the dinosaurs, that rock might be the most important rock in history. <laughs> All right, so Tevishaw is now at eight. Yeah. yeah. You, still, you still proliferate, too. Yeah, you yeah. can still do it. Okay, I'm gonna proliferate the minus one, minus one counters on your Bastion Protector, so it will die. Okay, well that ruins everything. So my two, I basically just wasted my whole turn now. So Ooh. I don't really know what to do. So that's two damage to Tevish Zot, which puts him at eight loyalty and I cannot activate his ultimate at eight loyalty. The worst part is I discarded five cards and those extra combats, well, they don't matter. I just have to end my turn. I can't minus 10 Tevish anymore, but I will plus two him. So I'll create two zero one black throw creature tokens. And that is sadly it. I'll pass turn. 
Okay, so to recap, on Joe's turn, we almost died. On Jimmy's turn, we almost died. Now I'm untapping with a Chroma. I'm still the Monarch. I feel surprisingly okay. I think I will start this turn by casting the Loyalist boy, Rogrok, son of Roga. Cool. Joe, I think, has proven that he is too scary to let live. He thinks he might be safe behind his 5-7 reach, but he's not. After casting Rogrek, I'll cast Eroas, God of Victory, giving all of my creatures menace. <laughs> oh, uh oh. Yep, the only thing that matters to me here is that all her creatures get menace. I only have one blocker, and now it can't block at all. <laughs> I'm in danger. Then I will play a Mox Amber, and then I'll play Command Beacon as my land for turn. That will trigger Horn of Greed, and I will draw a card. Nice. So if you guys kill me, you won't get Horn of Greed anymore. So before combat, I will pay red and white to activate my Slayer Stronghold, targeting Angelic Field Marshal. So how big is it now? Uh, it is a 7-5. Okay. And then I will go to combat, which triggers a Chroma, and a Chroma's gonna buff my creatures. Ooh. And then I will attack Joe with Angelic Field Marshal, and I will attack Tevish with a Chroma. Well, I have a Reach creature, but because of Menace, I cannot block, so I have to take the damage. I am dead. And then I got killed by an angel. Ow! It hurts, but she looks so beautiful doing it. Ah. All right, uh, I cannot block as well because of Menace. So Tevish will take six damage and go to four. Okay. All right, so now we're down to three players, and Josh looks to be in the best position with his huge board state, but I'm still not out of it yet, and Rachel's flyers are really scary. This could be anyone's game. And then in my second main phase, I will pay two to cast Sword of the Animist. Nice. So at this point, Josh, Jimmy, and I all have threats on the board, but Josh has a terrifying board state. I can't count how many permanents he has. I don't know what my chances of winning this game are, but it's gonna be an uphill battle. I will pass the turn to you, Josh. Uh, and because I am the monarch, I will draw a card. Oh, I forgot about that. Me too, and then I fell for it. Your go, Josh. Okay, I will untap all this stuff, and I will draw. A lot of mana available. It better be good. <laughs> a lot of mana. With Inspiring Statuary, all the rocks and the treasures, tons of lands, I have as much mana as I need. My only worry is I don't have very many cards in my hand, so I'm hoping that I can solve that problem. Okay, I'm gonna start off by tapping seven and casting Zendikar Resurgent. Oh, nice. very good. All the mana. Wow, now if there is a way for Josh to quickly rebuild his hand, this is it. We've seen this card just go off and win games on the spot before, so I wouldn't be surprised if Josh has a huge turn here. Then I'm going to tap three and play Azusa, Lost But Seeking. She's a creature and a land because of Ashaya. That will trigger Zendikar Resurgent. I'll draw. I'll get a rock because of Tago and a dragon egg because of Nesting Dragon. Awesome, everyone, every, yeah. yeah. Everyone followed that, right? Nice. Then I'm gonna tap six, and I'm gonna cast my second commander, Kodama of the East Tree. <laughs> Cool. So Kodama's here, my second commander. I didn't really build the deck around this at all. And unfortunately, I don't even have any permanents in my hand. So for the near future, he's not really gonna do much. He's just another way to get a landfall trigger and draw a card. Trigger, trigger, trigger. Same thing as before. So I'll make another rock, another dragon egg, and I'll draw a card from Zendikar Resurgent. Jeez. I'm gonna play Terramorphic Expanse, make a rock, make a dragon egg. Crack the Terramorphic Expanse for a mountain. So two rocks, two dragon eggs. Yeah, so another rock, another dragon egg. Wow. Holy cow, wow. Josh is going off so much that he has taken over my play mat as well. That's insane. I think he got this. And as I play all this stuff, it's triggering Kodama, but I don't have anything in my hands to take advantage of it, so that just doesn't matter. We're gonna ignore it for now. Ooh. So I've got... One, two, three, four, five creatures I can equip rocks to. Wow. So I'm gonna pay five mana and equip five rocks to my five creatures that don't have summoning sickness. Jeez. You might think it's funny that Josh just has a bunch of creatures equipped with a bunch of rocks, but I'm at 20 life. 
if he wants to, I'm basically dead to him in two turns because he just throws a bunch of rocks at me, untaps, and does it again. So I'm pretty scared here. Then I'm gonna crack my Arid Mesa and my Fabled Passage. Then I'll find a mountain in a forest. They both come into play untapped. And I'll take one going to 34. That'll make two more dragon eggs, two more rocks. Yeah. So I've still got the one floating. I'll add two green and I'll play gear per aether grid. Yikes. Oh no. This enchantment is one of the best cards in the deck. It now allows me to turn all of my rocks into damage, even if I don't throw them at people using their ability. So I'm sitting here with quite a bit of direct damage that I can point at instant speed at anybody who looks at me funny or creatures or planeswalkers. Actually, Planeswalker, I gotta take care of that type of shot. And then using the Aether Grid, I'm gonna tap six, seven, eight using rocks and treasures and deal four damage directly to Tevish Shot. Come on. Wow, without even going to combat, Josh gets rid of my commander. I was really hoping to maybe pull off the same stunt I did last turn. Now I'm in a position where I have to figure out something, otherwise I'm pretty much dead. Down to one card, this is a weird attrition-y game. I will pass the turn, Jimmy, go ahead. Okay. I'm not gonna do anything, I'm just going to untap. I will draw for turn. Okay, first things first, I will pay two mana and turn my Mirage Mirror into a Zendikar Resurgent. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ugh, Mirage Mirror is putting in work. It can be the scariest enchantment on the battlefield, it can be the scariest creature on the battlefield. Right now it means two of my opponents have doubled mana and a card draw engine. And then I'll tap four mana and I'll cast Clever Impersonator. And because I cast a creature spell, I would draw a card. And I'm gonna have it become a copy of Zendikar Resurgent. So you have double Zendikar Resurgent? Double Zendikar nice. Resurgent. Nice. Wow, okay, so Jimmy's got triple mana now and draws two cards every time he casts a creature. Uh, why is he doing what I'm doing but better? Oh yeah, he's the Sakashima deck. That's what he's gonna do. Oh, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Sorry for asking. Okay, uh, I'm going to use Yawgmoth, sacrifice a Thrall, pay a life and I'll put a minus one, minus one counter on a Chroma. And then I will draw a card. I'm gonna sacrifice another throw, pay a life, and give a Chroma another minus. I'll draw a card. Awesome. Okay, so Jimmy's putting minus one counters on my Chroma, while Josh is using two play mats for his board state. What gives? I'll tap one, two, three, four, and cast a Traw the Silencer. Oh. So I'll draw two cards now, thanks to the doubles and the card resurgent. Wow. I put the Traw in the deck because she's really, really sweet if you can clone her and actually kill someone that way. But at this point, I'm just playing her to draw more cards and stay alive. I will cast Scholar of the Lost Trove. I will draw two cards for the two Zendikar Resurgents, and then I will play Vidalcan Orrery for free from my graveyard. Pretty good. Jealous. So Jimmy's doing a lot here, and yes, I'm jealous of that Vidalcan Orrery, but it's a lot of value-based stuff. And I don't think any of that's gonna end up mattering if he's knocked out, which is what I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to do. I will tap for one mana and play a Soul Ring. Cool. And then I'll tap the Soul Ring and I'll play a Four Stone. All the rocks. All the rocks. Uh, and I, you know, I'm so terrified of everything else. I'm just not gonna do anything and I will pass the turn to you at the end step. I will flicker Scholar of the Lost Trove. And I will come back to the battlefield. And I'm going to cast the Solemn Simulacrum from my graveyard. And then I will find a basic land, put on the battlefield tapped. Uh, and I'm going to draw two more cards because of these in a card resurgent. And then I will go to discard and I will discard a land. And then I will pass the turn to you. So I did a lot this turn and I have a full grip, but I know for a fact that both Josh and Rachel are going to be gunning for me. With all of those rocks on the battlefield, I still feel really vulnerable. I'm just trying to stay alive. I will untap and draw. Okay. Are you gonna be able to hit him? I can get one through. Then I can kill him in response. Well, these both have menace, I have two flyers. He can make two flyers, so he can block one That's of probably these. your move, right? So at this point, I know I can't take Josh out, but maybe I can take Jimmy out with the help of some of those rocks. I will pay two mana to equip Sword of the Animus to a Chroma. Chroma's an 8-8? She's a 5-5. Five, five. She has two minus one counters on her. Oh, right. I will pay a red and a white to activate my Slayer's Stronghold give Angelic Field Marshal plus two plus O, Haste and Vigilance. And then I will go to combat, which triggers a Chroma, and will buff my Angelic Field Marshal. Uh-oh. And 
and Jimmy, I think both these angels are coming your way. Okay, so you're swinging at me with both angels? Yes. So I have a trigger on the Sword of the Animist. I will search my deck for a basic mountain and put it into the battlefield tapped. So this is bad. I can't let Rachel do any damage to me here because Josh can then just finish me off with all of his rocks. But if you've been paying attention, you'll notice that I'm in blue and I left a conspicuous amount of mana open. All right, I will tap Cabal Coffers and add six mana to my mana pool. I will add one more with an island and I will overload a Cyclonic Rift. Oh no. Ugh. Okay, so Josh is gonna throw all of his rocks at me. Ouch. But if my math is right, I'm not gonna die from that. And the Cyclonic Rift is gonna bounce all of their stuff back to their hands, which means that they're not gonna really be able to rebuild and kill me in time before I get another turn. And that's all I need. I think this is gonna win the game for me. Okay, so this is not great because the angel won't get through for the damage, which means I can't quite take Jimmy out of the game, but I can still hurt him for a lot. I really don't have a choice. I'm just gonna do as much damage to Jimmy as I can right now. So it's on the stack. Yep. Ooh. I'm going to tap one, two, three, four, five, and one of the treasures uh, using gear per ether grid to do three damage to you, Jimmy. Okay, I'll go to 15. And then I'm going to tap four, sacrifice two treasures for two more mana, so six total. And I'm gonna throw all the rocks at you. How much is that? 12 damage. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, then I go to three. <laughs> I just like this idea that I've got these six creatures and they're all like, Buddy the Elf, <laughs> don't mess with me. Do you think we could CG in, like like the, <laughs> the rocks coming out of my hand here? You think we can do that? I don't know. Okay, just in case we don't have the budget for it, just everybody out there in the audience, imagine just a machine gun of rocks. <laughs> it's pretty sweet, right? Okay, and then that is all that I can do, so Psychrift will resolve. Will resolve. Important to note here that Ashaya makes my non-token creatures into lands. So they are not bounced by Cyclonic Rift. Oh no. So something really interesting happens here because Cyclonic Rift only bounces non-land permanents. But because of Ashaya, a lot of my creatures are lands, and so they're not gonna get bounced. This is huge because it's gonna allow me to play a land next turn, make a rock, equip it to a creature, and throw it at Jimmy. This might be just enough to guarantee that I can knock him out of the game. My dragon eggs and stuff are not lands, though, and so are my rocks. So Psychrift will resolve. I can't believe your creatures don't bounce. You got rid of all the dragon eggs. Yeah. I made a really big mistake, I think. Oh no, this is bad. My plan only works if Josh doesn't have anything because now on his turn, he just plays another land, makes a rock and chucks it at me to kill me. It's another moment that I thought I was gonna win the game and now it looks like I'm gonna lose. Okay. Second main. Ugh. I mean, at this point, I feel miles behind in this game. Josh keeps a ton of his board and Jimmy keeps all of his permanents. Suddenly, I'm the only one with nothing. Luckily, I have something to say about their boards. Okay, staring down these two huge board states, I have no choice. I am going to cast a steer command and I am going to choose uh, destroy all creatures with converted mana cost four or greater and artifacts. Really? So I don't want to kill all the creatures because I still want Jimmy to die before his next turn. So I try and leave Josh just enough to kill Jimmy and then I have lots of time to rebuild my board. Okay, well, uh, I have no response because I am tapped out. In response, I will tap Castle Lockthwain for two and I'll turn my Mirage Mirror into Cabal Coffers. Okay, the steer command resolves. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, so all big creatures and artifacts are destroyed. Look at my board, what the heck? Jeez. And I'll put Kodama in the command zone. Uh, okay, I mean, it sucks to lose all my big creatures, but at least I keep the little ones around so I can still equip the rock to something and then throw it at Jimmy to finish him off. It does mean when I face off against Rachel 1v1 though, I'm not in a great position. Okay, Solemn Simulacrum died, so I'll draw a card off that. Hold up, one sec. This may sound weird, but I think that Austere Command may have just saved my life. I'll show you why in just a second. After that, I will pay my two remaining mana to cast Tome of Legends. Oh. Which enters the battlefield with a page counter on it. Then I will follow it up by my commander, Rogrok, son of Roga. 
broken, it's zero. It puts a page counter on my Tome of Legends. <laughs> Sweet. Value. I will recast Mox Amber, and while we're doing zero cost of things, I will also cast Paradise Mantle. Yeah, not bad. So I can actually rebuild pretty well after these board wipes. I got out a card draw engine, and I still have a land that gives stuff haste, which means maybe I can swing with a big angel next turn after all. That's actually impressive with what you had left after that. Yeah, I feel okay about it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel okay about it. Uh, and then I will pass the turn to you, Josh. On your end step. Oh, crap. I'm going to tap the Mirage Mirror's Cabal Coffers, and then with that six mana, I'm going to cast Thrilling Encore. Oh, crap. Oh, no. <laughs> nice. This is what I was talking about. Cyclonic Rift puts a bunch of stuff in your hand, so I wouldn't get anything, but a board wipe kills creatures, and now I get them all on my side of the battlefield. This is truly a thrilling encore. Okay, so this is uh, really bad. He's gonna have a whole lot of creatures. I don't know how we're gonna come back from this. Okay, so when that resolves, I will get Yogmoth, Etrada, Scholar of the Lost Trove, Nesting Dragon, Ashaya, Phyrexian Metamorph, and Solemn Simulacrum onto the battlefield. Wow. Pretty good. I'm gonna have the Phyrexian Metamorph enter the battlefield as a Mox Amber. And because of Ashaya, they're all lands. And so I will get six triggers off the Nesting Dragon. So I'll get six Dragon Eggs. Whew. And I'll find a land with Solemn. Put it on the battlefield. And that'll give me another egg because of Nesting Dragon. Jeez. Oh, holy cow. That is a lot of stuff. Oh, that austere command coming back to haunt me big time. Look at his board. It's insane. And then when Scholar of the Lost Trove enters the battlefield, I will target Cyclonic Rift in my graveyard. And I will bounce the Azusa back to your hand, Josh. That is bad. So talk about a big swing. I now have all of this power on my side of the battlefield. And now all I have to do is just get rid of Josh's creatures, and I don't think he can kill me anymore. Still maintaining priority, I'm going to pay a life with Yogmoth, and I'm gonna sacrifice the Solemn. Put a minus one, minus one counter on Tago. Yep. I'm going to draw two cards from Yogmoth as well as Solemn dying. And then I will do that again with Yogmoth. I will pay a life and this time sacrifice one of the eggs and give a minus one, minus one counter to the Dockside Extortionist. Yep. And when I sacrifice one of the eggs, that'll make a 2-2 two -two dragon token with fire breathing. Draw a card. Wow. And then I will tap the Phyrexian Metamorph for black mana on top of the other black I have floating, and I'm going to discard a land, and I'm gonna proliferate. Okay, so that'll kill both the creatures. Yes. Oh no. Remember how huge my board was just two seconds ago? Ugh, this austere command turned out to be the worst. So now Jimmy has this huge board and he's picking off Josh's creatures, which he was gonna use to kill Jimmy next turn. I think Jimmy might just win now. I think that's all I can do. Wow. You wouldn't know it, but I am still the monarch, so I will draw a card. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Josh. Okay, I will untap. All I have is lands now. I'll draw for turn. Okay, he's at one. He's at one. So here's the thing, Tago doesn't have haste. So even if I play a land here that makes a rock, I equip it to Tago, I still can't throw it. So I need to put two lands into play so that I can tap those two rocks through gear per ether grid and deal the one damage to Jimmy. Luckily, I have exactly the card that lets me do that. I'm gonna tap five, because that's how much Tago costs now. Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna pay three, and I'm going to replay gear per aether grid. Sweet. Okay, I'm at one life, so aether grid is really scary here. But Josh will need to have two artifacts if he wants to use it, so unless he has a fetch land or something, I think I'm safe. And then I'm gonna tap three. Wait, why, 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 why are you tapping three? <laughs> and I'm going to play Roiling Regrowth. Yeah! No! So I'll sacrifice a mountain. That'll put a forest and a mountain into play. But more importantly, that will trigger Tago twice, and I will make two rocks. No! Oh, it's not a fetch land, but it gets him two lands into play. That's two rocks, and that means I'm gonna die. And then I'm gonna tap the two rocks. Wait, 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 wait what if you did it? <laughs> <laughs> I will activate gear per ether grid and deal one damage to you, Jimmy. Oh, 
I got zapped by a bunch of rocks. I was so close. I was so... Ow. So Jimmy's dead, and it's down to me and Josh one-on-one. -on -one. And honestly, I like my chances. Josh has one creature on the board and it doesn't fly. And I can give my stuff haste. I'm scared here now because she's gonna get to repopulate her board before I do. I had to waste a lot of time killing Jimmy. Luckily, my life total is pretty high, so I hopefully have a little bit of time. Okay, uh, before I end my turn, yeah. I'm gonna tap one and I'm gonna equip a rock <laughs> to Togo. It's tapped though. Yeah. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Give that man a rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's your turn, Rachel. Well, on your end step, I will tap my Tome of Legends and remove a page counter and draw a card. Oh boy, card yes. advantage at this point. Okay, I will untap and draw for turn. My first main, I will pay seven mana for my second commander, Acroma Vision of Ixidor. Nice. Mm. Uh, that cast trigger puts another page counter on my Tome of Legends. Sweet. Pretty cool. And then I will pay four for Angelic Field Marshal. Before combat, I will pay a red and a white. And once again, give Angelic Field Marshal <laughs> Vigilance, Haste, and plus two, plus oh. Okay. And then I will go to combat, which will once again trigger a Chroma. Right. Which buffs my guys. So right now, Rogue Rock is a 5-6, and Angelic Field Marshal is a 10-8. And Josh, you are the last remaining fighter. Are you sure you don't want to attack Joe or Jimmy? I think, I think this is a move. Politics, everyone. <laughs> we're here, we're here. Master of politics. <laughs> I will send the Angelic Field Marshal and Rogue Rock's son of Roga at your face. Wow, that's a lot of damage. So I am gonna take 15. Ouch. And go to 19. Now that Josh is down to 19, I'm pretty sure I can build a board big enough to kill him next turn. I just have to hang on one more turn. And because I attacked with Rogue Rock, who's my commander, I put another counter on my Tome of Legends. Wow, I love the deck building here. And uh, that's all I got, so I will draw for the Monarch. So we're in the crown. Wow. Why did I give her the Monarch for this whole game? I probably <laughs> shouldn't have done that. Wow, that Slayer Stronghold, just so, so good this game. If she didn't have haste to give to her creatures, I would probably get an additional turn, but it looks like she's gonna be able to take me out on the next turn. The problem is all of her stuff is flying and I don't have a lot of ways to deal with flyers, so I'm really hoping that I can draw some kind of removal or some kind of answer to get rid of some of these flyers, again, to buy myself a little bit more time and get back on my feet here. All right, I will untap and I will draw. All right, I'm gonna pay seven. Okay. I'm gonna start with Zendikar Resurgent. Yep. Then I'm going to tap eight, and I'm gonna play Kodama for the second time. Here he is. That will trigger Zendikar Resurgent. I'll draw. That's pretty good. Then I'm gonna play Azusa, Lost But Seeking. Okay. That's gonna be two triggers. So there's a trigger on Zendikar Resurgent. I will draw my card, but there's a trigger on Kodama as well. With the Kodama trigger, I can put out a permanent of equal or lesser CMC. I'm gonna put out Inspiring Statuary. Nice. Cool. I'm actually feeling a little bit better. Josh is just rebuilding his board from before. And if that's all he has, I've got this game in the bag. I'm gonna play a Wooded Foothills. Oh. Nice. I'll make a rock. I will crack the Wooded Foothills. I'll put a forest into play. That will make another rock. Okay, sure. Go to 18. And then, so I have one red floating, I'll add two green to it, and three more because of Improvise. And I'll cast Phylath. World Sculptor. <laughs> Plant City. There you go. Nice. So uh, I'll draw off Zendikar Resurgent, and then we'll make 11 plant tokens because I have 11 basic lands. Jeez. Wow. That is a lot of plant tokens, Josh, but none of this stops my flying angels. The more Josh puts on his board, the more confident I'm feeling. Uh, and that's also gonna trigger Kodama. So I can put a six CMC or less permanent out. Uh -huh. I'll put back out the Court of Bounty. Oh, you yeah. become the Monarch. <gasps> nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm gonna hit you again. <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, I may be behind, then things do seem dire, but there is one upside. The king is back. King in the castle. Yeah, and then that's all I can do, so go ahead. On your end step, uh, I will do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna pay one. I'll tap the Tome of Legends to draw a card. And then, because I'm the Monarch, I will draw a card. Go ahead. I will untap, and I will draw a card for turn. Okay, um, I think there's nothing left to do but to cast Eroes, God of Victory. 
I hope he brings you to victory this fine day. Feels like it's going to. So now with the menace, Josh can't block my two angels, but I'm still a little damage short of killing him. Luckily, I have another flyer in hand. And then, because I just need a couple more flyers, uh, I'll put Hellkite Courser into play. Uh-oh. Then before combat, I will pay red and a white to give Hellkite Courser haste, vigilance, and plus two, plus zero. Yep. Wow. When I go to combat, Akroma buffs my team once more, and I will attack with my vigilance flying guys. And they all have menace because of Eros. Yes. And they're massive. Yeah, I have one reach creature, and it can't even block because of the menace, so I will... <laughs> and then I die to a bunch of flyers. Well, Rachel, a very, very good game to you. you. It's a very good game. Thanks, Joe. Good game, <laughs> good, game. Good, game. Good, game. good game. And then my flyers swoop in and win the game. You know, I think this was a perfect game of Commander. Everybody was the king of the hill at one moment. Joe almost won the game. Jimmy, a couple of times, almost won the game. I really went off, threw a bunch of rocks at people. I love games like that where the stakes are super high and if one person missteps, it's all over for everyone else. Looking through the Commander Legends cards has me so excited for this set. Draft Commander? I've never even heard about that, but I am super excited to do it. There are a ton of amazing reprints, stuff that people have been asking for for a long, long time. 70 new legends for players to choose as commanders. 40 of them are partners that you can mix and match and make awesome new pairings with. And I love the way that they're balancing each color out. I mean, that Keeper of the Court, I'm throwing in every single white deck I ever play from here on out. Ramping and making creatures? Get out of here. I had so much fun playing on game nights and I was happy to set a couple of records too. The first Boros victory on game nights and also I got the earliest commander on the battlefield too. Congrats, Rachel. You rock. Rock. Wait, Josh rocks. You rock rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you made it to the end of the episode. Wow, what a game. What a game, and it was really great to see just the variation of decks from those partner commanders. That was really cool. Yeah, and, and all the players, every single player had a moment where it was like, oh, they're about to win the game. Yep. Yeah, pretty cool, really swingy. Hope you enjoyed it. Want to give a big shout out and thank you to Ultra Pro, as always, who provides the playmats, the sleeves, the deck boxes that we highlight on the show. They've got all the Commander Legends themed stuff, so if you're buying cards from that set, and who isn't, mm -hmm. if you want the playmats and the sleeves that go along with the cards that you're buying, Ultra Pro has all that stuff. And it's the highest quality as well. And they give us stuff to give away to you, including the playmats we played on the show signed by all of us. Here's how you enter. We now have three ways to win. First up, you can head to Twitter and on Twitter, send a tweet using the hashtag Game Nights, that's Nights with a K, and just link to this video and say whatever you want about it. That way we can track the hashtag and find all of our entries. If you're on Facebook, head on over to our Facebook page and you can find the post that's sharing this episode. And in the comment section below, simply tag a friend or multiple friends that you think would be interested in watching the episode to share the love. Finally, if you're on Instagram, all you have to do is make a Magic the Gathering related post and use the hashtag game nights and we'll be able to find it that way now we only have one week from the release date of this episode to when we announce the winners and you can enter on all three of the platforms if you want just make sure that you use the hashtag game nights or follow the instructions on facebook to tag a friend and that way we'll be able to track your entry and then announce the winners at the end of the week yeah that's three chances to win no purchase required for entry there's no reason not to do it yeah absolutely uh, and before we go we want to talk again about the new game nights themed sleeves that we are yes. running a kickstarter for right now we have two really really cool and distinct designs we do however have a limited supply of these sleeves we had to pre-order our inventory so once we're sold out that's all we have for now so if you go to the kickstarter that's where you're gonna be able to order in fact we can't guarantee even at this moment if there are any available we right. just hope there still are some my advice would be go down to that more info box click on the link place your order if you're interested in the sleeves and hopefully you get a hold of some there's probably only a few left at this moment yep they're ultra pro they're really high quality with the chroma fusion eclipse technology they shuffle great they have the full art backing and it's definitely something that you don't want to miss out on it could also make for a great gift as well yeah all right everybody really appreciate you tuning in to game nights uh hope everybody has a great holiday season yes and of course extra turns as well very very much coming up coming soon sooner than you probably think 
everything. Plus, we have a ton of coverage still to go for Commander Legends. So, yeah, hope you're not sick of us. Yeah, just hit the subscribe button so that you're definitely going to know when everything happens. And then maybe you'll get sick of us. Don't get sick of us. <laughs> don't, don't get, get sick, sick of us. Yeah, 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 don't get sick of us. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Peace.